and how I finally enjoyed looking in the mirror for the first time after 19 years of suffering. How did I do it? Well, a lot of what really worked for me is stuff you probably won't read about in conventional medicine books or skincare magazines, and I bet it will work for you too. I'm going to tell you my story because it's probably very similar to yours. It doesn't matter if you're a guy or a gal, anyone with acne will relate to this story. And if you watch this entire video, which will not be online for long, I will do more than just tell you a story. I'll give you the solution I discovered and used to this very day. In this video, I'm going to show you how to eradicate most of your existing acne in the next 30 days and how to permanently eliminate the root cause of your acne and gain the clear skin you've always dreamed of. I've never given away this much information before in a free video that you can watch online all in one sitting, so I hope you won't miss this chance to learn crucial facts that could help you cure your acne once and for all. There are three easy principles you must understand in order to gain permanently clear skin. The three critical principles you must know are, one, what acne really is and why you have it, two, what doesn't work and what makes your acne worse, and three, the only proven way to get rid of acne forever. So what can you expect if you embrace these three easy principles? Well, you can permanently cure your acne within 30 to 60 days, stop acne breakouts and see actual results in less than seven days, eliminate blackheads, excessive oiliness and redness, remove most types of scars and acne marks, look and feel better and regain your self-esteem, dramatically improve the quality of your life. Acne is an epidemic skin disease of industrialized countries, reaching prevalence rates of over 85% of teenagers. In the U.S., acne nowadays persists even after adolescence into the third decade of life in nearly half of men and women. But it's considered a disease of Western civilization, meaning in some places, like Okinawa, it was rare or even non-existent. In this regard, most common acne is not some physiological phenomenon of puberty, but may represent a visible risk indicator pointing to aberrant nutrient signaling promoting chronic epidemic diseases of civilization. This is what they mean. The dairy, junk foods, meat, and egg proteins in Western diets all conspire to raise the activity of the enzyme TOR, contributing to acne and obesity. So using diet to suppress TOR may not only improve acne, but may prevent the march to more serious chronic TOR-driven diseases of civilization. So the excessive TOR stimulation induced by the standard American diet may first just manifest as premature puberty and acne, but then may contribute to obesity and diabetes, cancer, and Alzheimer's. A lot of this is relatively new. Until recently, for example, only a weak association has been accepted for the role of milk and dairy products in acne formation. But there is now substantial evidence supporting the effects of milk and dairy products as enhancers of acne aggravation. Milk is not just food, but appears to represent a most sophisticated hormone signaling system activating TOR, which is of critical concern given that TOR is recognized as a fundamental driving force for a number of diseases. But if milk is naturally supposed to stimulate TOR, why the problem? Because we're drinking milk from the wrong species. Cow's milk is designed for calves. Cow infants grow nearly 40 times faster than human infants. Cow's milk is three times more leucine, the primary activator of TOR, so it may lead to human TOR overstimulation. It's like where they do experiments giving donkey milk to rats to see what happens. It makes no sense. And of course, milk is for babies. Continued consumption of any kind of milk after um, uh, uh, childhood, during adolescence and adulthood, is something that never really happened naturally and may have long-term adverse effects on human health. In this regard, it's kind of frightening to realize that more than 85% of teens in Western countries exhibit acne. This implies that the majority of our population is living with overactivated TOR signaling, a major disease-causing factor, which probably may pave the way for the development of other more serious diseases. A history of acne 
has been associated with breast cancer risk in women, for example, and prostate cancer in men. So early dietary counseling of teenage acne patients is thus a great opportunity for dermatology, which will not only help to improve acne, but may reduce the long-term adverse effects of Western diet on more serious tour-driven diseases. So just like urologists use erectile dysfunction as an opportunity to save lives by putting people on heart-healthy diets, dermatologists can use acne as a way to save lives by putting people on a cancer prevention diet. So how do you turn acne on and off via dietary manipulation of TOR? A comprehensive dietary strategy to treat acne can only be achieved by higher consumption of vegetables and fruits, given preliminary evidence for the effectiveness of natural plant-derived TOR inhibitors.